my name is Matt McLeod. Today we're going to tune, detune, and wax a snowboard. To do this, we're going to use some base cleaner, some towels to wipe off the base cleaner, screwdriver to take off the bindings, file to detune, file to tune, stone to wipe the burrs off, hot waxer, hot wax iron, uh, waxes, scrapers to walk, wipe off the extra wax, and then finally, uh, Brillo pad and other tools to smoothen out the wax and then a standard brush to wipe the wax off. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is take off the bindings so that when we're waxing it doesn't create dimples on the base. Okay, okay now that the bindings off, the next thing to do is base clean the base of the board. To do this, you can use a basic citrus cleaner and a couple of towels. This is done basically to take off any of the sap that you had during the spring or just to take off old wax. Another way of doing this is taking um, some wax, hot waxing on real quick and then scraping off while it's uh, still hot. What this does, it takes out the dirt and grime that is uh, in the pits and grooves that are actually made into your base. So let's get started. This is a super important step because you have to get all the dirt out so that the wax can properly adhere to the pits and grooves that are designed in your board. Especially with a new board, it's nice to uh, have nice clean pits and grooves and go fast. Okay, once your base is clean from all the grime, wait about 15 minutes and let the, uh, let the citrus cleaner do its work and dry. Okay, so the next step is to detune the tip and tail of your snowboard. This is for any snowboard, um, whether you ride park or you love carving. Anybody can do this because basically the edges around your tip and tail won't do anything except for hang you up when you're trying to do butters and fun stuff like that. So basically what you're going to do is take a standard file, take it to the widest point in your board, and just start going at it. Go also go one way. both the nose and tail and then uh, when you're done we can move on to the next step which is either sharpening or detuning your board depending on what type of router you are. Okay so the next thing we're going to do is file the edges uh, for say if you're a downhill rider and you love carving and whatnot. Uh, in case you don't have one of these nifty tools which we'll get into in a minute you can take your same file that you use to detune your tip and tail and to pay, take some electrical tape, masking tape, duct tape, or whatever it is and make about three to four wraps around the tip of it, uh, the opposite of the handle. What this is doing is creating the proper uh, dis angle so to tighten your, or not to tighten, but to uh, sharpen your edges. Okay, so once you get that done, put the taped part on the board, scrape it away. One thing you can do to make sure you are, you're scraping enough uh, metal away to uh, tune up your edges, you can take a sharpie, and go down the side of your your board, make a black mark. This way, you know how much board, uh, metal edge you're taking off, and then you know when to stop, and it's even uh, an even angle on all the sides. So again, just go one way, and you can work in sections as well. But just keep going on it. Another way to do it is get one of these nifty tools that has an angle built in. You can adjust at any angle you want to uh, possibly help detune it or actually tune it. In this case, again, we're tuning for a guy who likes to carve and is not in the park that often. So what you're going to do is take this, place it on the edge. Again, go one direction. Super simple. Just run it along the edge until you can't see any sharp anymore. All right, so what we're going to do now is detune for the riders who uh, like the park all day and uh, want to be riding rails all day and doing some street. Uh, so to do this, again, we're going to take the normal file that you can find in your household and basically take it to, the, take it to your edge and just do work. 
do it in a, a rounding motion. Basically what we're trying to do is take off the factory sharpened edge and just round it off so you don't get caught on a rail or a box. And again, don't be scared if you're hitting rails anyway. It's not going to hurt your board to do this to it anyway. And again, um, you can take this and it's all personal preference. I mean, if that's all you're going to do is be riding rails, then you want this to be as round as possible. And if you're hitting street and kink rails, definitely make this round as possible. But if this is your first time doing it, round it a little bit, go out and ride, see how it feels. And if it's, you think it's still too sharp, go home and scrape it again. It's always better to take a little off and then take more, opposed to taking it all off and be left with nothing. So once your board is either detuned or tuned, next thing we're going to do is take off the burrs that we created with, uh, with both the sharpening tools. To do this, just get a basic stone from, your, uh, from Swix or any local shop. Take it and rub it around on the edge. For uh, If you just sharpen your board, rub it against the base of your board so you, again you can keep a nice flat angle with it. Just taking off the board, don't get too aggressive with it. And then if you, uh, if you actually detune your board, feel free to go around the edges like this and get all those burrs and pull it off. So now we're on to the hot waxing portion. We got three different types of waxes here. Uh, we got two all temperature waxes, which you really can't go wrong with, and then a Burton um, cold temperature wax, which is good for I think it's temperatures of negative seven, negative seven degrees Celsius, which is like pretty cold. So uh, we're gonna take our all temp wax here. We got our hot iron. We got plugged in. It's been sitting in for about ten minutes now. Get warmed up. A couple ways of doing this. Um, first method is applying the wax to the iron and dripping the hot wax onto the board like this. And then the other method is putting the wax onto the iron and then rubbing it in like a crayon. Um, I prefer dripping it on but both do the job just fine. So we're going to do this all over the board. Get a nice even coating. Uh, you don't want to get too much but just enough spots so you can eventually uh, rub it in and make a good even coating on the board. Okay, once you got a good coating, take your hot iron, gently glide it around the whole board. You'll see the wax starts to melt and disperse. It's very important that you don't leave an iron just sitting on your board because it'll, uh, it'll end up burning and degrading the wax. So to get a nice even coating, you'll know because your, uh, your, board, your board's going to be dried out from the, uh, from the uh, base cleaner. So what we're going to do, once you see the base start to show a little bit more vibrant colors, that's when you know you have a good even coverage. Or you can get down, look at it, and see if uh, you got all the wax covered appropriately. And again, for uh, for the iron, you can use you can use any iron. I mean, you can go to Walmart, pick up a cheap iron. Just don't be using your mom's iron to uh, to do this. You'll ruin some uh, some of dad's clothes. Um, but you can also get an iron like this. This one's uh, made by Bakoda, and uh, it works great. Plug it in, 10 minutes, heats up, wax your snowboard in no time. And as you can see, the board's sitting on a couple barrels here. Um, I'm pretty ghetto, so uh, I like to keep it that way, but you can go out and buy an expensive set of vices and set your board up that way, hold it nice and even all the time. You don't have to worry about uh, jimmying your board around when you're scraping it or anything like that. But uh, this works just fine. You can use a couple chairs and or anything like that and they'll do the same trick. No need really to go out and buy the expensive equipment just for this. So uh, once the wax is uh, fully dried and cured into the base, next thing to do is grab a couple scrapers and start scraping away. What we're doing here is basically evening out the surface so you can have a more uh, 
frictionless board surface to ride on. Uh, you get a couple different scrapers. This one reaches the whole way, the whole span of the board. Uh, I prefer this Burton, this uh, Burton scraper. It's pretty awesome. It's always worked for me. Uh, so basically, what you're gonna do, I, I like to start and do the board in halves. So I start in the middle of the board, pull the scraper towards you, grabbing all the wax. Not, don't take all of it off. Just make sure you're just getting a smooth surface to ride on. Alright, okay so once the board's scraped, take a brush, wipe it off, and then what we're going to do next is take like a standard Brillo pad sheet or a nice brush like this that's got some copper uh, files in it and uh, some nylon bristles. Basically what we're going to do with this, get on the wax, just start rubbing it in. This is going to make a super soft uh, base and uh, smoothing everything out so you can have a nice frictionless base to ride on. Don't be afraid to get aggressive with this. You're only going to make it nice and smooth. Also, like I stated, you can use one of these. It does the same trick. Once that's done, grab your brush again, brush everything off, and you finished waxing your board. So once you're done, flip your board over. Grab your bindings, put them back on. Make sure you get your proper angle right. I do 15-15, but it's all to whatever you prefer. Park rider or downhill rider. Okay, I just hope I was some help and uh, go out there and shred them up.